What's up? What's up, divas? What's up, divas? What's up, divas? What's up? Y'all already know what time it is. It's Real Talk Wednesday. What's up, everybody? I hope you all have a, like, a really great day, afternoon, evening. Whenever you're watching this video, I hope you have an all like a really great day. Okay. It's your girl, A. So let's get into this. So for one, I hope you all are blessed, staying safe, staying positive. This is how we do. It's actually really Monday. You know, I really try to get these videos done, processed, you know, edited. So that way, Wednesday comes around early, early in the morning when you're on your way to work driving out you can watch or you can listen to me because if you're driving i really don't want you to watch me i'm just sitting here girl minding my business minding my black business but if you're driving you can listen to me if you at work you can listen to me pop me in the headpiece okay and just listen to me that's all i'm asking y'all to do just listen but i want to say thank you for all of you guys who have been leaving comments watching real talk you know i'm glad that i did bring it back i think it's been since what this is this is april so february march april two months i brought real talk back i've been doing real talk for forever not forever but forever okay since being on youtube it wasn't really a planned thing you know my thing was to just do makeup videos when i started youtube 16 year, over 16 years ago but girl let me just tell you i don't know what made me think that i was going to be a makeup guru makeup beauty influencer on youtube because i can't do makeup to save my life now when i say i can't do makeup i can do like the basics for myself for my needs okay i'm not no makeup artist i'm not out here trying to tell you guys what to use maybe i'll suggest what i like to use and see if you like to use it but girl my tutorials are basic i mean basic i don't really even like to wear makeup that much you know what i'm saying like there was a time have you ever can you relate to this like seriously can you relate to this um, there was a time and the time wasn't that long ago. All right. I'd probably say like five years ago, five, six years ago, um, five years ago when, um, I just wouldn't leave the house without makeup. I wouldn't leave the house without a wig on. I wouldn't leave the house not done. Now, there's a difference from being, being done and not put together. Or, you know what I mean? Because I'm always put together. I can look natural and put together. But there was a time in my life, for, a, and this was a long period of time. When I tell you that I went through this phase for a very long time in my life, I would say like 20 years I went through this phase where I wouldn't leave the house without doing my makeup, making sure my hair was done, done. Like even to go across the street to like the corner store to the corner store, I had to make sure that I was done, done. Like, girl, who was you trying to look cute for or be beat, have your face beat for and your hair done? Just to go get a loaf of bread or whatever. And I went through this phase for like a really, really long time in my life, you know, and um, I'm not sure why I stopped caring. And it wasn't even that I didn't care. But I just felt like, you know what? I can go outside without makeup. I can go outside without my eyebrows done. I can go outside without a face full of makeup. I can go outside without a wig. And I started feeling like this like some years ago. And it wasn't that I got tired of doing my makeup every morning, but I just kind of was like over it. You know, it was like a, a habit that was broken that I really just didn't care for that much anymore. Now, don't get me wrong. When I do decide to get dressed up and go somewhere, I, I do my makeup. I don't do it what's the right word? I don't like heavy makeup. Okay. Like this right here is perfect for me. Eyebrows done and some eyelashes on girl. I'm good. And a little bit of bronzer right there. I'm good. That's it. I don't have any foundation on so y'all can see my freckles. You know, I just have some bronzer on that I blended in because I needed a little bit of, you know, a little color. Girl, as long as my eyelashes is on. Okay. And my eyebrows are done. I'm, I got some, you know, a little pressed powder under my eyebrows just to make them look a little neater. But girl, yes, I'm perfectly fine. I will say I'm happy that that part of my life, that phase that I went through is over. Not saying it was a bad thing, but I just feel like it took away from a lot of things that I could have been doing. Instead of sitting there for like two effing hours doing my makeup, I could have been doing something else. And you know, we all go through phases in life and I'm not like a really favorite, I don't really like to wear a lot of makeup. I think after living out here in Arizona where it gets effing hot, like a thousand degrees in the summertime, you get over the whole makeup thing. You just be like, girl, I'm not about to be putting all that on my face. Hell no, it's hot. That shit gonna melt. By the time I get outside, it's gonna done melt, okay? So when I do my wig videos, yeah, girl, I beat my face. I just feel like it's beneficial. It goes better with the wig. But there are times when I don't even want to wear a wig outside. So I will slap on a ponytail, okay, real quick and be done with it. It's too hot out here. And I'm not in that phase anymore where I feel like I need to wear a wig. I need to wear makeup. As long as, like I said, I got on some eyelashes, girl, so I don't go outside look like a mole rat, then baby, I'm fine. But I just feel like sometimes we go through a lot in life and we realize that certain things just don't matter no more. And as long as I look neat and I'm clean, then certain things just really don't matter to me anymore. But anyway, 
Other than that, this video today is being sponsored. Okay, can y'all believe that? It's always nice when somebody wants to sponsor you. So today's video is being sponsored by Teddy Blake New York. I've actually worked with Teddy Blake before, and I'm just gonna show you the person I already had and I've been using. But if you've never heard of Teddy Blake New York, check them out. I will link them down below. They have the most good quality leather, Italian leather, handcrafted in Italy for a fraction of the price. And girl, y'all already know what's about to come up. Mother's Day, okay? You wanna get your mother something sweet, your wife something sweet, your your girlfriend, your fiance, your baby mama, your grandmama, your godmama, your auntie, your cousins, your sister, whoever, even yourself, get you a nice Teddy Blake bag. Now this one I have, I like this bag. Now first of all, let me just tell y'all about me. I am a big bag wearing girl. Like I like big bags, big bags. So you know what I'm saying? Like big bags, like you could put everything in them, like diapers, if I'm taking my grandkids, like water bottles, my favorite cup, you know, stuff like that. Snackies, okay. Uh, lotions. I like to put stuff in my bag. Plus my wallet is bigger than this bag, okay? So I need somewhere to put my wallet. But when I'm not going out like to a place where I can carry a big bag. You know when you gotta get dressed up, you gotta put on your makeup and your wig, and you gotta look fancy or just really, really put together, I will use a small bag, okay? So this one right here, this one is cute. This one I picked out a minute ago. I did have it in a try on and this is a Teddy Blake New York bag. Really, really chic and look at it. Opens up really nice, okay, girl, okay. Very, very, very nicely made, nicely leathered. They have plenty of bags on their website to choose from. This is just one of them. I think I have about two or three Teddy Blake bags that I've accumulated over the years, and they do last for a really long time. The leather on them is really soft. They're all made with Italian leather. Are definitely luxury bags, but at a fraction of the cost, girl. So, and they're also timeless bags. So these are not gonna go out of style. They're definitely going to last. The leather, like I said, is Italian soft. Check them out. I will link them down below. They have these in like crazy different colors. I should have got the royal blue one because I don't know, royal blue is like my color now, but I I want it to stay neutral. You know what I mean? I want it to stay neutral. I think this bag can go with a lot of different looks. So that's the reason why I chose this particular color. Luxury done right. No overpriced bags. Italian leather. And you already know Mother's Day is coming up. So make sure you get your mother, your girlfriend, your sister, or whoever's special in your life, something sweet, timeless, affordable, and stylish that they love. I will link everything down below for you guys. Also, I did have uh, someone email me asking me, what is my favorite daily products that I use? They wanted me to share. Like, I love sharing because sharing is definitely caring. They wanted me to share what I love to use every day. Like, what are my favorite daily products? Like, what I use every day that's affordable. Girl, I like, a, I, there's a lot of things that I like to use on a daily basis. This one being one of them right here, girl. Y'all see me sipping on this cup all the time. Okay, cold water and oil. This is definitely one of my favorites. Um, it's not one of those Stanleys, but it is definitely better than a Stanley. You have a handle. Okay, this stays cold for my ice be in here for like sometimes it was 24 hours. So this stays cold for like over 24 hours. I love this cup. It's a 40 ounce, $20 on Amazon. I use this every day. I also have a cream colored one. Um, I use this one a lot more because it has this handle. My other one that I got from Amazon, it's the, it's also the same company. It's a 20 ounce, a 40 ounce, excuse me, but it doesn't have a handle. But um, I love this one because it makes it easier to carry. Plus the straw is right here and you can easily flip it up and down. It does not spill. And then there is a straw inside that you can detach and clean out. So this is what I use all day, daily, every day. And then my other favorite products. Okay, so look, y'all wondering, a lot of people ask, how do I keep my skin so blemish free? Honey, I'm about to be 50, okay, in June. And when I was growing up as a kid, we didn't have all of these different type of skin moisturizers and skin balancers and skin toners. So what I grew up on is Noxzema, um, cocoa butter, good old fashioned Dove soap and water. And you know, um, Avon, okay? But I also do like to use Nivea cream. I've been using this forever, for years. Now this right here is not cheap. I think this is like $17 on Amazon. I think in Walmart, it's like $11 or $12. I'm not really sure why they keep putting it in a glass bottle. So you have to definitely be careful with this. But this is the Nivea cream. It's super duper thick. Um, it's really, really thick if you can see it right here. Um, but I love this stuff. This, I use it on my face. Or if I don't have cocoa butter, I'm using this. So I've been using this on my face for like over years, for years, okay, for years and years. And I do use it on like my feet. Now for my entire body, I don't use it because it's so thick and it just takes a long time to like warm up so for my feet because they be dry as hell girl okay my feet gets dry when i tell you they look dry y'all be like girl 
Do you love yourself? <laughs> but if, if you continuously work this into your soles of your feet, I'm telling you, your feet will not be dry. Like, But I also like to use it on my face. I have it on my face right now. This is a really good balance. It's just Nivea cream. It's really thick. And I love it. I love this. But um, also, I do use this one right here as well. And this is the Nivea Cocoa Butter one. This one is also a cream. This is the, uh, the Deep Nourishing Serum. So this one is not as thick, okay? This one is not as thick. This one you can definitely distribute a lot easier on your entire body. But it's thick, but it's not thick like that. I like this. This is a lot cheaper than the thick one. This will run you like 7 or $6 on, um, on Amazon. And at Walmart, probably about the same price. Plus, you do get a little bit more ounces. This is 13 and a half fluid ounces. And this is 16 so this one is a little bit cheaper but it does the job it does the same thing i love this stuff i love nivea i've been using nivea for years and nivea ain't cheap girl also this has been my favorite since christmas my daughter tati put me onto these which is the eos lotion so for those of you who've been asking me what is my favorite and share my favorites these are my favorites okay you know when you have something that you really really love and there ain't no more like the pump is not working because ain't nothing coming out so then you gotta unscrew the top and you gotta like bang 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 this is what I've been doing instead of just going to buy some more. But girl, it's like this much lotion at the bottom. I'm going to use this up. And when it gets to like where I can't get it out by banging it, girl, I'm going to cut it open and get it out. Let me tell you, I will use every last drop of this stuff because it ain't cheap. It's like $7, but it's very moisturizing. This is my favorite one, though. This one smells the best. This is the Shea, but um, this is the Jasmine Peach and it has Shea Better Moisture 24 hour body lotion. So if you guys are, want some moisture in your life, check this, check these out right here. Here. Like I said, this is my favorite smelling one. And then this one is also does smell good too. This is the vanilla cashmere, but I've used this one the most. Okay. So those are my two favorites. And along with the Nivea, you know, also I was, um, someone told me on here before, um, to try out the Lumi because there was like a foam that I was using, a uh, soap and foam that I like to use in my Fupa area, you know, Fupa sweat baby. So I finally got around to using the Lumi. And girl, let me tell you about the Lumi, okay? This stuff is really, like, amazing. Like, I don't know what to tell you. This is a whole body deodorant. Now, we got this from Walmart. I would not suggest getting it from Walmart because it's probably, like, in all honesty, it's like about 3 or $4 more on Walmart. But if you can get free shipping from Lumi, then get it from the, the website. Because Walmart will, you know, they want to get their coins and a little bit of extras too. But I don't I don't use this under my arm. I just use it in my fupa. And girl, my fupa be smelling good all day. I know that's like a TMI. That's definitely a TMI. But I'm just here to tell you because I know there's some fupa girls that's watching. Honey, our fupa sweat. We sweat. It's a part of life. Rub this under your fupa. Girl, What? fresh scent all day and this one that i have is the peony rose it smells really good so this is also one of my favorite products that i've been using every day for a month now and i love it i cannot complain and because it was 17 dollars at walmart that's the reason why i'm not using it under my armpits because i have deodorant that i've used for years and love it and i don't never smell that worked fine for me so i'm gonna keep using that under my pits but for my fupa this is definitely a winner 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 chicken dinner okay yes and then the last product that i love and i've been using this for like what two weeks now girl you see them edges okay do you see how my hair is laid now this is actually four day old hair well friday saturday sunday monday four day old hair i did this hairstyle on through thursday it's monday so four day old hair and my edges have been slicked down like this and have been staying straight like my part has stayed straight i don't have helmet head at all but i'm gonna tell you and i told y'all in this last one this edge control gel from Argo that I did a video on a few weeks ago is amazing. Like this stuff is amazing. It goes on so soft, so smooth. It's not like any of those other greasy ass um, edge controls, but it definitely holds. And I think that's why it's been holding. I love it. Okay. I don't even need to add any extra during the morning time. I just put me on a little scarf and I'm good to go. I might have to straighten these down a little bit and sometimes have to straighten this, but just a tad bit of water on my brush. And then I swoop it, girl, good to go. I don't even have to add no more. So, yeah. Yes, those are the those are my favorites. Um, I hope that, you know, that was a good share. You know, because sharing is definitely caring. And that's what I do best. I care and I share. Always. Now, remember last week when I was telling y'all there was something that I forgot and I just really, really couldn't remember and for the life of me. And then I just put up a little note 
Who lives on this side, on the west side, on the west coast, where you have 99 cents only stores? If you guys shop at the 99 cents only stores, you guys do know that are aware that they are closing down all the 99 cents only stores. Now, not everything in there was 99 cents. Things stopped being 99 cents a while ago. And I hate to say this, but I'm going to be heartbroken because I loved that store. They had a little bit of everything. And that was what I wanted to share with you guys. If you guys know about the 99 cents only store and they have one in your area and you weren't aware... They are going out of business. They are closing down. I think it's like over 400 stores, if I'm correct. And it's 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 sad because they're closing them down because people have been stealing. It's theft. You know, they have to basically compete with stores like Walmart and Target. So 99 cent store who's been around for 42 years is going out of business. But okay. other than that, this weekend, I really wasn't doing too much of anything. I decided this weekend I wasn't going to do shit, which was sit back and relax. Saturday, I made some bracelets for my daughter-in-law um, representing um, the month of April, which is National. Autistic Month, Autistic Month. So she wanted a bracelet that just represented her son. So I did go ahead and I made her some bracelets. I also made a couple other bracelets um, that I didn't even put on my website yet. But yeah, crazy thing, right? I was cleaning out one of the closets downstairs, and um, I had been cleaned this closet out because you know I gave it, um, I, it was my son's closet, and I've been cleaned it out. I had gave Tinky his space in the closet, but there were some things in the back of the closet. Like the closet is long; it goes back under the steps, so it's a long closet, and I store things behind in the back part. So I wanted to clean up that area because, you know, when people go in and out of the closet, they kind of like threw things. It wasn't organized like it used to be um, when I did it like a couple years ago. So I went in there and I was cleaning up some things. And I remember that I put this tablet in the closet, you know, like a couple of years ago. It was in my son's drawer and I put it in the closet. So when I was cleaning it out, I said, let me, let me, let me charge this up and see what's on it. And then I could just clear it out and um, give it to Tinky. Maybe he'll, he'll want it. So I charged it up and um, Saturday night I decided to turn it on. Um, you know, it brought back good memories, but it also gave me like, it brought me in a place where I probably really didn't need to be at the time. It was in the evening and um, uh, damn, my son had pictures on here, you know, and I just, it just made me realize how much I really, really missed him. You ever feel like you, you try to, it's not even that you try to block things out, but you, you try to just be okay with life. You understand what I'm saying? So I've been okay with life. I've, I've been trying to be okay with life. And when I seen, um, excuse me. Hold on, guys. I'm sorry. Um, I'm really sorry. I really didn't think I was going to feel this way talking about it. But anyway, um. You know, you just try to be okay with life. Um, it's not that I try to block things out, you know what I'm saying, with him. Because um, I think about him still every day or all, all the time. Not all day like I used to, but I, I think about him every day. And I, I'm going to be honest and say I've, I've, I've done pretty well for myself Um When I say I've done pretty well for myself, I'm not talking about financially. I'm talking about keeping myself together and... um being okay. And I do have my moments. But I just wanted to tell you guys that um, when I found the um, tablet, I didn't really know what was on the tablet years ago. I never knew what was on the tablet. I just, you know, I was cleaning up and I put it in the back. Um, I ain't trying to mess my mascara up, girl. It took me a minute to do my eyelashes, okay? Um, um, so when I had found the tablet a few years ago, you know, I, I put it away because I was just cleaning. And I, I didn't know what was on the tablet. You know what I'm saying? I didn't know what was on the tablet. Um, and then when I cleaned the other day, I said, let me plug this in, like I said, because maybe I could, you know, reset it and clear it and give it to Tinky. He can use it. And then when I charged it. And then Saturday night when I was looking at it and I seen all these pictures of my son that I didn't have, I was just, I smiled. I smiled a lot of the time when I looked at all these pictures and, um, a little bit I did, you know, and I went through the emotions of course. Um, but I emailed the pictures to myself because how else was I going to get them? But, um, it made me feel good to, to see pictures that I hadn't seen. Um, and I just be trying to be strong. You know what I'm saying? I just be trying to be strong for myself, for everybody. But that's what I did for the weekend. I cleaned. I made some bracelets. And I looked at some pictures. And that was that. I tried to really relax on the weekends. But I do, you know, 
I do apologize because I did not want to be on here crying. And plus, I took my time to do this mascara, y'all. All right? Yeah, so I ain't trying to be messing up my mascara. And on top of that, I ain't trying to be ruining nobody's day sitting over here crying, okay? So, woosa. I'm fine. But other than that, um, please, you guys, y'all know I don't really ask y'all for much, okay? But to rate, comment, and subscribe, and to watch the videos, maybe that might be much, all right? But I'm asking y'all again, I'm going to put this out there every week if I have to. Please, 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 I'm not begging y'all, but I am asking y'all, okay, please, to check out my daughter-in-law's baby registry. She don't know I'm doing this. Okay, like I said, I'm trying to support her because she's going to be becoming a single mother as of May because my son is going away for a few years, and I'm trying to help her with her fourth baby that will be expected june 5th all right he's gonna be a gemini we say about gemini's because i'm one all right and my son was also a gemini who passed away he was a gemini june 12th june 19th i'm hoping the baby's born like on june 19th okay give me a little grandson that was on my day i'm definitely gonna be happy but i i ask you guys please to check out her baby registry it's all through amazon inexpensive stuff and i also do thank those who did send some stuff from amazon on the baby registry i want to thank you ladies because i did get those so i thank you so much and I hope I didn't take up too much of your time with this chit-chatting, yapping, and all that good stuff. Because it's Real Talk Wednesday. And you know what time it is. We got to get into this Real Talk. Everything that I share with you guys will be down below. The Teddy Blake. The products that I like to use. Hopefully, I don't forget the link on Amazon for the cup. The baby registry. You know what I'm saying, guys? Please donate to the registry. Please. I'm asking you guys, please donate to the registry so that I can help her out. We can all help her out. And let's get into this Real Talk. Okay, girl? Let's get into Y'all know I need my water because my mouth be getting dry and I'm promoting water, y'all. Make sure y'all drink your water and stay hydrated. I've been drinking a lot of water since I had that cup, okay? Good cold water. And I got my CarMax because my lips be getting dry, okay? Now, if you want a, um, a real talk about you, you can go ahead and send me an email to muffinismylovers2012 at gmail.com. Please put in the subject line, real talk. Or you can also use my real talk email, which is aprilsrealtalk at gmail.com. Please make sure to put in the subject line, real talk as well. If you want to change your names in the email, meaning you don't want nobody to know it's you, then go ahead and let me know. Please change my name or I already did so. If you don't really care, then go ahead, girl, then just bring it. But let's get into this real talk, you guys. Now, today, let me tell y'all, I got two real talks, okay? Yes, two real talks. We're going to spend some time together today, and that's what it is, what it is. I feel like doing two real talks is really beneficial for those who have been waiting. I used to do this before on my channel. It did end up being like an hour. First one that I'm going to read, you know what? Sometimes you just can't make this shit up. Like, straight up, you cannot make some of this shit up. The things that people think and do is just, like, amazing that some people's heads are just attached to their bodies, and they really actually think like this. So she titled this How to Tell a Friend, okay? How to Tell a Friend. Hey, Diva April, how are you and your family? Congratulations on the grandkids and the new one on the way. I thank you very much. Thank you in advance for reading my email. You can call me Bay, like Beyonce, if you like. So I am in my 40s like yourself, and I have had this group of girlfriends who I hang out with on the weekends. We have been friends for years. Now, there are four of us, and out of the four, one of us is married, which is myself. My other friend, she has been with the same man now for like six years, and my other two friends are single. Now, the one friend who is single, she be going on dates and meeting up with dudes. She's a vibe, like a catch, got her stuff together. Basically, all four of us have our shit together. Now, the fourth friend, you can call her Linda. She's been single for about a little over two years now. She doesn't go out on dates. She seems like she's never worried about finding a man. I'll be trying to get her to get on the dating apps and find a man. I'll be trying to talk with her and tell her she can't be alone forever. We all in the same age bracket as well, April. 
I'm not sure if it bothers her not having a man, but her daughter is grown and doesn't live with her. It's just herself and her dog, and her sister lives with her from time to time because her sister is an airline attendant, so she be from state to state at times. Anyway, April, I've been trying to have a talk with my friend about snagging herself a man. She shows no interest. Me and Linda are the closest out of the four, so we always talk and hang out together the most. April, I'm in shape. I work out five times a week. I stay with my hair done. I love my wigs and weaves. And girl, yes, I love pampering myself, wearing my makeup, dressed to impress all the time. And I have no problem in getting the attention of men, but mainly my husband. I'm trying to tell Linda she needs to spark herself up if she ever wants to find a man. Not saying she's fat, but she should. She could tone it up some. She likes to wear her hair in a ponytail and says makeup isn't her thing. But April, how should she expect to find someone if she walks around looking frumpy? I'm trying to help her out. I don't want to see her miserable. She says she's not worried about a man. She's not miserable. She's been through enough in her life where she's just seeking peace. I'm sorry, I'm not understanding any of that. I have had a good husband, a good man, and I'm trying to help her. Like, who wants to be alone? I don't understand how any woman doesn't want to pamper themselves with pretty things, such as hair, nails, clothes, heels, and such. I'm sure you can relate to what I'm saying. What should I do, Diva? Thank you, Bay. So this is why I told y'all in the beginning about the one thing that I had not really cared about anymore which was the makeup and the wigs and getting dressed up like that to go to the corner stores and stuff this is why i told y'all that because this is how i feel and this is why i said to you guys that you can't make this shit up you know what i'm saying and because i read this email like you know i do read them before i air them or i read them to you guys i cannot relate to what Bay. she said i could call her Bay if i would like like beyonce first of all you 40 years old Bay. you shouldn't really want to be compared or relate your name to beyonce beyonce is who the fuck she is and you who the fuck you are okay i'm gonna call you Bay because you asked to be called that not because i like to but some of the shit that she just said in this entire email got me all the way messed up now see there's one thing that i did not that i did not tell you guys when i told you that i'm about to ride solo i don't have no friendships like that like i do have a couple of friends still but the one particular one that i was just chilling with all the time i'm riding solo out and we no longer are in a friendship, one of the things that I had told her was I didn't really care to be in a relationship. I don't care about no man. And I constantly had to tell her this. But when a person tell you they're not interested in no man, when a person tell you they don't care about being in a relationship with no man, when a person tell you they could give two fucks about a man at the time, then you should respect that. And that was the one thing that I used to tell her, okay? Because I don't give a fuck about a man. I don't give a fuck about where men are at. And it's not that I don't want one, but it's at the time of my life where I really don't care to choose to have one. But she would constantly, not constantly, but enough say, well they got men there i was there at this place and they got men there they had all these black men like i don't girl i'm not i'm never thirsty for a man never been thirsty for a man if that's what you choose to do then that's fine and you know what i'm saying like i never forget this one time we was out we was at our, one of our spots that we would hang out at we were sitting outside on the patio and um we was talking to just like a random person that was there and i can't even remember how the topic started but basically the young lady was saying how she lost all this weight and then my so-called friend was saying you know um i can't even remember how we got on this topic but it was being celibate she was celibate for like what i think like four or five six months i don't know but she was like girl don't even ask her because my shit is almost four years like why would i be ashamed to be not got no dick in that long like girl let me tell y'all something that's the last thing on my mind but when a person tell you that they don't really care two fucks about having a man or getting a man then realize that and respect that now here we got Bay, who so-called supposed to be this woman friend and she talking about that's her friend but she talking about she need a man she don't care about no man she can't understand why she don't want to pamper herself she can't understand why she don't want to wear no makeup and wigs and weaves every day she can't understand why she don't want to be in no relationship right now the girl did tell you though Bay, your friend linda did tell you that she She's not worried about a man because all she's wondering and caring about is some motherfucking peace. Okay? See, this is the problem with a lot of women. First of all, when you get at a certain age in your life, now she's 40. She's in her 40s, like she said. First of all, I cannot relate to you. So I don't even know what the fuck you're meaning by any of this. You wouldn't be my friend if you was on here telling my motherfucking business about how, oh, I don't want a man or how I don't want to dress up or how I probably can't get a man because I ain't toned up. She did say in this goddamn email um, if she would lose some weight, basically, not lose some weight, but if she toned up some because she goes to the gym five times a week 
Let's see, where's it at? I've been trying to have a talk with my friend about snagging herself a man. She shows no interest. Me and Linda are the closest out of the four. We always talk and hang out together. I'm in shape. I work five. I work out five times a week. I stay with my hair done, and I love my wigs and wheezing. I love pampering myself, wearing my makeup, dressed to impress all the time. First of all, dressed to impress... I'm sorry, but I don't dress to impress no fucking body but myself, okay? That's the one thing that people need to realize. You you out here showboating for who? Other people? Nah, see, I showboat for myself, for nobody but April. I'm not dressing to impress anybody, okay? If you are not impressed but by me and my personality and the person I am, then I don't know what the fuck to tell you, but get a life, okay? Now she talking about she love her wigs and weaves. That's good to each his own. Snag herself. A man trying to get on these apps. She wants her to get on these apps, um, spark herself up, to tone it up some. First of all, bae, you not really a good friend. So I don't really understand what made her think that I was going to agree with her on any of the bullshit and nonsense she spoke about. But what type of friend are you when you're worried about your friend snagging a man? You're not worried about her self-confidence. You're not worried of herself about her self-peace. She did say to you that she wanted peace. She did say to you that she's not interested in a man right now because of all the things that she's been through in life. You cannot respect that. Like when a person tells you that they've been through enough in their life and they just seek in peace, then that means that should be enough for them right there. That means that you should respect her choice and respect how she feels and shut the fuck up stf you bae some women get so caught up in this this elaborate this this is luxurious lifestyle like i'm not saying ain't nothing wrong but loving luxury or loving the high quality things in life that's you you do what you want to do but not everybody is the same bae not everyone want to be like you not everyone want to be like beyonce okay everybody don't not everybody want to be like that some of us just want to wake up every morning and be blessed to wake up and be happy with what we have and be happy we can afford to pay our fucking bills and be and put ourselves together in a neat and proper way and go on with ourselves here's the thing I don't know about none of y'all because I don't go on none of those dating apps. I don't really care. If we don't meet organically in person, then I don't know what to tell you. People be on these apps lying all day, every day about what they got, who they is, who they ain't, who they with, and what who they ain't with, okay? This is the problem. And on top of that, you don't really know who you meeting on this app. People could tell you anything from under the sun. They tell you things that you they believe and feel that you want to hear on these apps. And for you to tell your friend why she don't get on none of these apps and snag herself a man, basically Basically, you just trying to put her in harm's way. And I say this and with a clear conscience because some of these men on these apps ain't nothing but toxic, harmful, and unhealthy for a motherfucker. And why put your friend in harm's way if she just told you on several occasions she's not interested in finding no man right now. She's trying to find peace, okay? There have been people that have asked me, girl, you don't get horny. You ain't looking for no man. You've been single for almost four years. You ain't worried about no man, okay? But I tell y'all, no, I'm not worried about no fucking man. I could do just fine on my own. I could do bad by myself and I could do damn good by myself. I don't really need a man. I'm not saying I don't want one. I'm not saying that I ain't looking for one. Okay, when I get one is when I get one. I'm not thirsty. I'm not desperate. You know what I'm saying? No, of course not everybody want to be the fuck alone. But let, let's just talk about this real quick. There are some people that just cannot be alone. There are some men that cannot be alone without a relationship. There are some women that cannot be alone without a relationship. I am not one of those. And it seems like your friend Linda Bay ain't one of those people neither. Sometimes it's best to just sit back and relax and enjoy your single life. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you got to learn to love yourself. Sometimes you got to get to know your fucking self. Okay. If you have had trauma, if you have had disgust, if you have had heartache, okay, in your life, in your relationships, why not take a break? Why not learn to love yourself? Why not live free? Okay. So we got this young lady, Bay who loves to pamper herself. She married. Good for you. Sometimes that shit ain't for everybody. The lady already been in a relationship. You said her daughter don't live with her. She's grown. Means she's had a relationship. She said she's trying to find peace from all the shit that she's been through in life. Can we not just respect that the woman wants to find peace in their life? Some of y'all be so sucking into being in a relationship that y'all don't even really know what a real relationship is. You don't even have a relationship with God. You don't even have a relationship with yourself. You don't even have a relationship with your family and friends. I never forget. I was asked, do I get horny? Because I ain't had none in so long. I really did think that was like a disrespectful question to ask me. And I thought it was. But no, the answer is fuck no, I don't. I got five kids. Don't you think I had enough dick in my life? Okay, like I'm just going to be blunt and say that. Don't you think I've had enough sex in my life to where I'm good? I've been through a lot in my life. I'm not worried about a man. And see, that was the one thing that would irritate me when I would hang out with this particular person because I was asked that enough. 
I told her on enough occasions, I ain't worried about no man. I don't care about no man being there. I'm not interested in no man. It's not my thing right now. I'm good. I'm good. I'm looking after my family. I'm, I got grandkids. I'm looking after myself. I'm enjoying my single life. And I don't know if that was one of the reasons why we might have departed as friends because we just couldn't see eye to eye on that. And I don't understand why a person can't respect your space and your boundaries. If you tell them that you're not interested in a man, stop bringing up men. I'm not. It's not a thirst trap for me. I don't give a fuck about a man. You know what I'm saying? And it's not that I don't mean no harm when I say that, but I really don't give a fuck about a relationship right now. Like, we all know that I've been through some shit in my life and she's also known that. And so I feel like people that really don't want to get their shit together, they just say the dumbest shit out of their mouth at times. You know what I'm saying? And um, sometimes, let me tell you something, Bay. I wish I knew Linda, because I'll let her know that she do not need you as a motherfucking friend. You ready to throw her to the wolves. If you was a real friend, Bay, and this is just me talking to you, babe, straight up. If you was a real friend, you would respect her boundaries. You would respect what she said. You know what I'm saying? Not everybody needs to be in a relationship. That's good that you got a man. That's good that you got a husband, okay? That's good for you, okay? What's good for the goose ain't always good for the gander, okay? It don't work like that in the real world. And when you a friend friend, then you learn how to respect people. And you learn how to respect people's decisions. Now, I don't know about y'all that's watching this, but... I'm pretty sure there are some single women out there that have been watching, that are watching this. And how long have y'all been single? That's my question. I want to put, I want you to put that in the comments. How long have you been single? And because you're single, what are your thoughts on it? Are you ready for a relationship? Are you happy being single? What are your thoughts on being single? I want to know. You know what I'm saying? Like, listen, I've been single. I've been with the same person for the 23 years of my life. And it was not all great and it wasn't all bad. But I'm happy. I'm glad that he left and never came the fuck back. Okay. And I say this and mean it. All right. When he left for his mother's passing for her funeral and he didn't come the fuck back because he wanted to stay with his sister. I'm glad that he didn't come the fuck back. I have all the peace in the world right now. Yeah. I enjoyed the time that we did spend together when we got back together after I divorced him. But girl, listen, the living together was not for me. And when you decided you didn't want to come the fuck back, that was all I needed to know. Now, yeah, I blocked the motherfucker. It is what it is. We don't speak like that. And you know why? Because I love my motherfucking peace. Okay. Now, granted, a few weeks ago, hmm, probably like a month and a half ago, I did unblock for the day because I thought I would share some great news about my daughter's GPA. Okay. However, he didn't want to call me. And I seen that he called me because I have Robo Killer on my phone, which tells me who's calling. Even though I blocked you on my iOS, it still shows up on my robo killer. It don't allow you to call. It just shows me that you call. So I unblocked and I said, you know what? Let me share the good news. But I guess I really couldn't because the motherfucker was drunk. You know, you went back to being an alcoholic. That's not my problem. That's not my business. I tried to share the information, never got around to being able to share the information with him because he told me about three or four times how he worked 12 hour shifts, seven days a week told me this three times. So you work seven days a week, 12 hours. And I've this part that I'm sharing with you guys, I just shared with you guys in a story time while doing my makeup the other day. But I want to I want to tell you guys before I air it. You know what I'm saying? I want because this email. I ended up hanging up the phone because he was drunk and he was talking some other nonsense. And I'm not going to tell you now because you'll hear it in the video. But the nigga called me 30 and I wait. When I hung up, I hurried up and blocked. Did he call me 30 times? Showed me right on goddamn um Robo killer 30 times and left messages. You called me 30 times back to back. Ridiculous. This is why I enjoy my single life. This is why I enjoy my peace. Oh, my stomach was growling. This is why I enjoy my peace because of shit like that. You don't really know who you fucking with when you meet somebody. They can tell you they, they name is Sam and they could be the son of Sam later on down the road. You don't know who you messing with. And for you, babe, to want to go ahead and throw your friends to the wolves like that and talk about how she needs to tone it up. Maybe she could snag a man or how she could do her makeup and put on a wig and weave. She's a natural girl. She don't wear all that shit. That's her business. Now you being disrespectful. And friends like you is the type of friends that I really wouldn't want to have. That's why I'm, I don't have the friendship that I have now. You know what I'm saying? Because of disrespectful shit said and disrespectful shit done. And after a, after a while, girl, people start to feel like some type of way. Like, you know what? I don't got time for this bullshit. So, babe, you wrote me and thought that I was going to, you know what I'm saying, relate to what the fuck you were saying. Nah, bitch, I really can't relate to what the fuck you got to say. Because everything you just said to me in this email was childish. At your fucking ripe age of 40, married, you think that it's important to snag a man. You think that it's important for your friend to get her looked together, um, 
compared to you, you know what I'm saying, what you would do to find a man. You don't really know what's important in her life. To me, peace is important in her life right now. And what did you say? You get the attention of all the men, including your husband. You sound like a real fucking selfish, self-absorbing bitch, okay, right about now. And I say that wholeheartedly to you you sound so stuck up and so conceited like who want to be your motherfucking friend y'all got four of y'all and poor linda she's stuck with you on a daily talking to you on a daily you really don't have much to contribute to linda's life but well i'm pretty and i'm put together i'm polished i wear my wigs we make up every day i dress to impress and i get the attention of all the men including my husband you sound real motherfucking stupid listen babe you probably gonna unsubscribe after what i said to you and that's okay too email me back if you like to that's fine too but you're not the type of friend that i would want okay you don't really care about her well-being her well-being is she want peace her well-being is she says she's been through enough okay what i need for you to do babe is to self-evaluate yourself okay take a look in the mirror and find out do you like what you really see do you like who you really are can you yourself go without wearing wigs and weaves and makeup all the time can you yourself not dress to impress but just be a normal person can you do that because if you cannot do that on your own, then it seems to me that you're not happy within yourself. And maybe it's you who needs to evaluate things, not your friend. Maybe it's you. So no, bitch, I don't agree with anything that you wrote. I don't agree with anything that you said. Yeah, we all do need to pamper ourselves. It's called self-love. But sometimes people don't need to pamper themselves by throwing on loads of makeup, putting on fake hair or any of that. Quite frankly, to be honest with you, I felt kind of, in, in a way, when I read this email, to be honest with you guys, I felt kind of insulted because... That's me. Not really me, but I've been single for four years. Okay. And four years is not a long time, but I don't, I don't like to wear makeup all the time. Like, I, you know, I, I wear a little bit of makeup here and there, but I'm not trying to sit here every day and put on makeup. I'm not, I'm not about to do that. Okay. I got things to do and I'm not about to wear a wig every day. Where the fuck am I going? And I, I want my head to breathe. I don't know about y'all, but it gets hot out here in Arizona. Plus I'm going through menopause. Okay. Because I had a full hysterectomy. So a bitch get hot. Okay. Wigs, wearing a wig all day will not work out for me all the time. I get hot. All right. And then I'll be ready to tear that shit off in public. So the best thing for me to do is to whip it out with a ponytail, okay? Or a headband wig because I got to breathe up here, all right? And on top of that, dress to impress. Like I just said, if you ain't impressed with the person I am right here, voluptuous all, you know what I'm saying? Love handles, a fupa, wearing leggings, sweatpants, jeans, and a t-shirt, then I don't, and some Crocs or some slip-on slides or some sneakers. If I don't impress you like that, I don't impress you with my personality, the feeling person that I am, then bitch, I don't know what to tell you, okay? So like I'm telling you, babe, you're not really a true friend. You're not the type of friend that Linda needs. Respect boundaries. Respect her. Respect the point that she want to be single. Respect the point that she want peace in her life from all the things she's been through. And respect the fact that what I'm saying to you is you need to self-evaluate yourself because how you speaking and how you talking is not the type of woman that I would want to be my friend. And that's on facts and that's on period. Okay. So therefore, this is my opinion and advice to you, bae. Stop comparing yourself to Beyonce because that's what I felt like you just did. Like bae, like Beyonce, like I'm not even impressed with her, okay? I mean, yeah, I went to her concerts and I think she's a great performer. She know how to put on a show. Next time you are talking to Linda, try to be more understanding because it doesn't seem like you're really paying her any attention. You got your ears closed, honey, or it's going in, it's going through too quick. You know what I'm saying? Listen to what she's saying. Listen to what your friends need. If you really want to be a friend to somebody, listen to what they need. Listen to them and respect them. How you live your life is not how she needs to live her life. That's not what friends do. Just because you like to put on makeup every day and you love to dress to impress and you love to wear wigs and weaves does not mean that she has to. If that's the type of friend that you're looking for, then that's not within Linda. You know what? I cannot speak for everyone, but I would think that saying not nobody wants to be alone. I don't, I don't, I don't know of anyone that wants to be alone in life. They're but, but I don't know everyone either. Some people do like to be alone. Some people do like to be alone. I like to be alone, not alone, alone, but sometimes I do like to be alone. Uh, she can't understand. I'm sorry, but I'm not understanding any of that. I have a good husband and a good man and I'm trying to help her. Like who wants to be alone? I don't understand how any woman doesn't want to pamper themselves with things. Some women don't want to pamper themselves like you. Everyone wants to pamper themselves. It's just 
What type of pampering is it? What is the extent? So this is the part that a lot of people don't understand. Some of y'all bitches worry too much about what the other bitch is doing, what she wearing, what she got the fuck on, how she living her life, if she got a man. Some of y'all worry about that shit too much. She said, well, this is, hold up. Um, she don't got no man. She lives alone with her sister when her sister is there because her sister is a flight attendant. So she don't be there all the time. But she got a dog. Bitch, I got a dog. Dogs are man's best friends. What the fuck? They give you unconditional love. They don't judge nobody, okay? My dog is my best damn friend, all right? Let me let me tell you something. She's my best friend so much that when this girl come back to cut her hair because she grooms my dog, okay? She gets groomed every every other month. It's not the same person. This girl's new to me. I've used her twice. I used the same company, though, for this past three years. And they, they do, it's mobile grooming. Now, she done came and cut my baby hair twice. The other day was the second time, okay? So every other month. Girl, okay, my dog, I love her so much that when she come back, I got a whole video to show her because you done cut my dog's ear the wrong way. You done chopped her fucking hair up. You done gave her a bad haircut. When I noticed that shit after, I was like, oh, no, we cannot do that. So, yeah, we do care about our dogs. Yeah, we do love our dogs. They're dogs. They might be just animals to you, but they're more than that to us. So, so what if she lives with her dog and her sister? Who the fuck are you to compare your life to anybody else's? You know what I'm saying? What I'm saying? Stop comparing yourself to your friends because that's not what you do. I hate when people do that. Some of y'all don't realize the life you live is not what everybody the fuck else want to live. And some people be just a little bit too materialistic with their shit. And babe, you seem very materialistic and self-absorbed. So get your shit together and learn how to love yourself first. And that's all I'm going to say now. But y'all could give Bay some criticizing comments down below. Let her know how y'all feel about being single. Now let's get on to the next one. Okay. So when I get done with this, I'm going to make me some good old grits with cheese and some sausage. Who like grits? Who... Who like grits? Like, I love me some grits. Now, let's get into this next one. What should I do? Hi, Miss April. My name is Darlene, and I have an issue with some family members. Okay. Here's the story. I live in a three-story brownstone in New York. I live on the second floor. My mother lives on the very first floor. And on the third floor is my cousin, Shanice, and her three kids. She is my mother's sister's daughter. Shanice's mother passed away some time ago. So my mother agreed to let her rent out the third floor. It's my mother's brownstone, and she has been owning it since I was in elementary school. It's well-kept, updated, and just really nice. Now, of course, my mother does charge us rent, as she should. We are adults here. I'm in my 30s, and so is Shanice. So, of course, she should charge us. Shanice has been living upstairs for like five years now. Her kids are the ages of 13, 9, and the last one is 3. Her children all have the same father, but she's not with him because he's in and out of jail, so she dumped him. Well, Miss April, let me tell you, it's been hell living with her these past few years. Like in the beginning, it was great. We would cook together, watch movies together, basically did everything together as we grew up together. Well, over the past three years, she's been doing nothing but get on my last freaking nerves. I've had to talk to her several times about allowing her son to be awake at 12 o'clock at night, running upstairs, jumping upstairs, etc. He is three. He should be sleeping like it's midnight. Why isn't your child asleep? I live downstairs and you got that little monster running above my head like he's at the park. She is not the same person she was when she moved in five years ago. She'd be having random men coming over all hours of the night. And I have told her about this because, for one, this is my mother's place and I'm not allowing anyone to come in and mess her home up. So for the past six months, Shanice has not paid my mother rent. She claims she doesn't have it like that, but she has a job. She constantly has packages from Amazon being delivered, and she eats out a lot. Doesn't take her trash out. Will leave it between the steps, and I have to bring it down. I now lock my door to my place, my apartment, because she was coming in when I was at work taking food from my fridge. My kids' snacks were missing, their video games, etc. Things I'm supposed to share things with her. I need her to pay my mother her rent. I've told her this and her response is, your mother owns the brownstone. She doesn't owe the bank any money. I don't understand why she, we should be paying her rent when she has no mortgage. Now, Miss April, my mother is not crazy with the rent amount. Yeah, she does own the home. However, my mother is retired. She does have bills like electricity, cable, car insurance, and groceries. Shanice doesn't understand you can't live somewhere for free. Heck, my mother charges us both $615 a month, which includes rent, 
and cable. We have a splitter to where we can share the cable and it includes water. Now, yeah, I have my own electric bill and grocery bill, etc. But I'm grateful to be able to have somewhere to live in New York City, Brooklyn, for only $615 a month. I have a two bedroom apartment, very nicely kept, and I get to see my mother every day. My daughters are quiet kids. They are actually twins and they are 12. My mother has never complained about them running over her head. What should I do? Like my mom doesn't want to put her out because it's her sister's daughter and she promised her sister she would make sure Shanice would be okay as my aunt was suffering from cancer. So that was her promise. At this point, I'm ready to knock her head off, but I know my mother wouldn't allow it. Please tell me what is the right thing to do. So Darlene, y'all already heard the problem. Okay. Y'all already know. Darlene lives at home. Well, Darlene lives at home, but she don't really live at home. Like Darlene live in a brownstone. Her mother lived on the first floor. She lived on the second. And her cousin, Shanice, lived on the third floor. She lived in a brownstone on Brooklyn. Funny, look, you know what? I used to live in Brooklyn when I was... 10 to 14 years. So 10 years old to 14. So I lived in Brooklyn on Halsey Street for four years. 45 Halsey Street. Okay. Brooklyn, New York. All right. I never forget. And this was my sister's father that we lived with. Um, my mom, she, she moved, we left Queens and we went, we went to live in Brooklyn for four years. We lived with my grandfather in the projects, in the Bland Projects in Queens, Flushing Queens, all my life. But for four years of my life, we did move to Brooklyn, Best Stuy, 45 Halsey Street, and um, it was a brownstone and we lived there. So I remember those days. It was cool. It was really cool. Now, I don't know how much the rent was because, I, like I said, I was 10, but I'm pretty sure it was probably in that threshold, $600, maybe not. I don't know. I was a kid, so who knows? The rent probably was, you think the rent was, I was 10, so that was almost 40 years ago. So I wonder if the rent was like that much then. It probably was, you know what I'm saying? But anyway, so um, Darlene lives, you know, in the brownstone with her mom. Now, she got her cousin that lives there, and her cousin don't want to pay rent because her cousin is saying, well, technically, your mother owns the house. She don't owe the bank any money, so why? Why do we need to pay rent? I wish I could live there for six hundred and fifteen dollars a month. Okay, y'all can put look. You can put Shanice out, Darlene. I have no problem moving back to New York City and Brooklyn and paying your mama six hundred and fifteen dollars a month. Okay, where are you finding six hundred and fifteen dollars a month rent in New York? You cannot even rent a studio for that price in New York City. You got to be kidding me. You probably can't even rent a room for that price. If she get put out, Darlene, where's she gonna live? I guarantee you, she's never, ever, 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 ever gonna find somewhere to live at $615 a month. Come on, man. Your mother could charge her way more than that and she still could be getting over. You know what I'm saying? Like, she, your mother could charge her $1,000 for a two-bedroom in a brownstone and she still would be lucking out. Okay? She still would be getting over. All right? So $615 ain't shit. She probably only want that money, that little bit of money, to pay her own bills. Like she said, $615 and you complaining about that shit? Girl, I wish a motherfucker would charge me $615 to live somewhere. I would be paying you for a whole year, okay? Seriously. I will pay you for a whole fucking year. Here's the problem with a lot of people. They feel like because they family, they can just do whatever the fuck they want. They feel like they're entitled to shit. And that's the sad part about it. You feel like you're entitled to some shit. Be grateful because $615 ain't shit for rent, okay? Here it is. This poor older woman has promised her sister that she would take care of this girl, this woman in her 30s. She promised this to her dying sister that she would take care of her child, that she would make sure that her child was okay. And she did that. You got a two-bedroom. You live upstairs. Your cable is included in your rent and your water. And you being selfish, and unappreciative and ungrateful. Not to mention, she has three kids that live with her and she allows, whose fucking kid at three years old is running around at midnight? Like, on some real shit? Let me tell y'all. There's no way that I would be allowing anybody with some fucking little three-year-old running above my head at midnight. I'm either going to come upstairs and I'm going to open your door and I'm going to let you know you're either going to put him to bed or I'm going to put him the fuck to bed because you're being real disrespectful right now. And then on top of that, you got random dudes coming in and out of your house. Now, this this part, I really listen to each his own. That's your business. You want random dudes over? It is her place. It is her apartment. She does. Well, she hasn't paid rent in six months. So, I mean, I guess you can. Excuse me. I guess you can complain about the random dudes that's coming over. Because in all reality, like I just said, you don't know who you're talking to. You don't know who you're getting with. He could say his name is Sam, but he could be the son of Sam. You really don't know. So I get that part where Darlene is saying you got random dudes coming over at all types of night. And this is her mother's home. She's going to be protective over her mother. If that was my mother shit, I'd be protective over that shit too. But your mother don't want to put her out because she promised 
her sister or something, but you ready to knock her head off. Let me tell you, this is why a lot of family members I don't fuck with. There are fun family members that I fuck with, and there's family members that I don't fuck with. And I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one that has gone through this in their lifetime or is going through something like this with a family member. Just because they're your family doesn't mean that you have to be a part of them or life with them. You don't have to allow them to get over. This is what you need to do, Darlene. What would I do? I would have that bitch put the fuck out. This is what I would do. This is what I would do. Listen, I understand that your mother doesn't want you to knock her head off. Why would she? Okay, your mother's an older woman. She probably doesn't want any violence in her home. That is her family. And of course, she's going to feel like you shouldn't want to fight her. You do need to talk to your mother because it's not fair to your mother that she's living upstairs rent-free for what? Was it five or six months? She lived there for five years and she hasn't paid rent. For the past six months, Shanice has not paid my mother rent. She claims she doesn't have it like that, but has a job. She's constantly getting packages delivered from Amazon and she also eats out a lot. So therefore, that means she can afford it. If she is getting packages from Amazon all the time and she's eating out, she can afford it. She can definitely afford it. This is what you need to tell your mother. You need to let your mother know, mom, she's getting deliveries from packages every day or often. However, she's getting packages. She's getting packages delivered all the time. She's eating out all the time. She can afford to pay you, okay? You're not asking a lot. But sometimes you know what you need to do and it's unfortunate, but what you're gonna need to do is, uh, because I know there's eviction laws, there are, you know, squatter laws and things like that, you're going to have to have your mom write up some type of disciplinary note and have it notarized that if she doesn't have her rent paid on a timely manner, she's going to, she's going to be evicted. You know, I'm pretty sure she doesn't want to put her and her children out in the street, but what if your mother really did need that money? What if your mother needed to pay bills and she wasn't able to do so because of this reason? What if this is putting your mother behind? You know what I'm saying? It sucks when family feel like, well, because she owns her home, you don't have to pay the rent for there. What? There's a lot of people that own their houses, own them, and don't own no money on them. And they, they rent them out and they get the money for them. Why would you want somebody living in your shit for free? Like, who does that? Like, if, if somebody's going to live in your shit for free, listen, let me tell you something. If I had a brownstone and I owned it and you wasn't paying me rent, bitch, you getting evicted. And I'm going to make that whole motherfucking apartment mine. And that's going to be my glam studio. It's going to be a guest bedroom up there. Okay, that's going to be my little glam studio. Straight up. Because if you're going to live up there for free, then I'm going to make it some shit for me. I don't see nobody living nowhere for free. And even if your mother does own that property and she don't owe the bank any money, she still got taxes to pay. Everybody has taxes. Your cousin Shanice need to be told that she needs rent to pay. I say this all the time. Family be the first to do you the fuck in because they feel like they're in entitled to shit. They feel like because they are family to you, that they can do and walk all over you the way they please. They can pop up. They can take your things. They feel like Sharon is Karen. They feel like they don't have to pay you the fuck back. They feel like they can talk to you any old type of way. They feel like because they are family, this is what family does. It's sad that you cannot choose your family, but you can choose your family. Okay. At Shanice's ripe age of 30, she should know better. Okay. She should know better. You're going to have to let her know, darling, she either going to pay your mother or she's going to have to find somewhere else to live. And that's that's what it is. And if you have to go through the process and the steps of getting her evicted, then that's what you're going to have to do. But I promise you, going upside her head and knocking her head the fuck off doesn't work. It's not going to work out. It's going to make it worse for you. Your mother's going to be upset with you. You might get arrested. You don't need the cops being called to your mother's home. Your mother's going to have to step up to the plate and she's going to have to let Shanice know, I did promise my sister that I will look out for you and I will make sure that you will be okay. But I did not do that at my expense. It is what it is. You either going to put yourself and your, your foot down and get rid of the situation or you're going to learn to deal with it. Do you not understand how irritating it is to have people stomping above your goddamn head at a certain type of hour in the night? Trust me, I have lived in a, um, when I lived in New York, uh, what was it called? Um, it's a two-story family house. So there was a flat. It was a flat. So we both had different entrances. Okay. Different doors. They were next to each other, but hers had steps and she lived upstairs and I lived downstairs. It was irritating to have, and she didn't do this on purpose, but you know, they walked heavy up the damn steps. And then at night, sometimes I could hear them and they walked heavy. And to have somebody's kid running around at 12 o'clock at night, that I can only imagine. I can only fucking imagine how she felt. That's just disrespectful. It's just disrespectful. So you got this little motherfucker running around crazy. Like, don't you want some relaxation? Don't you want some time as a parent? You got three kids. Don't you want some time to chill and relax? Like, at 12 o'clock at night, your kids should be in the bed. Shit, the whole household need to be asleep. If you work, if the girl work, like she said, she got a job. All y'all motherfuckers need to be asleep, okay, at midnight. Because you got to get up and go to work. Some people just really don't 
don't appreciate shit. And that's the sad part about it, darling. There are people that just really don't appreciate shit. And Shawnee seems like she's one who just feels entitled and doesn't appreciate shit. Now, on that note, I got to go. I'm st- I'm so hungry, you guys, that my head is hurting. And I don't know why, because I did eat last night. I made me this really good salad. It had bacon in it. I, 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 I cooked the bacon myself, okay? I cooked my chicken. And I cooked my shrimp. It was so good. And I don't know, is it because I ate it late? I think it was like nine o'clock when I ate it. You know, you're not really supposed to eat late. And I've been trying so hard not to eat past 730 because I know that that do that will contribute to your weight gain. So even though I'm eating salads at like nine o'clock at night, I do know that it's still not good to, you know what I'm saying? To eat that, that heavy or that late at night. It's not a heavy, but I mean, I did put bacon and chicken and shrimp in it. But girl, I'm starving. I'm starving. Okay, I feel like I haven't eaten in days. So it is time for me to go downstairs and get something to eat. I'm going to make me some grits and sausage. And then for dinner, I'm going to have another salad. I'm going to make me another salad. I love a good salad. I'll eat a salad every day if I have to. Because as long as it's a good salad, girl, yes, I love a good salad. Divas, Divos. Please check the description box below for Teddy Blake, the items that I like. And also, I'm asking you again, because I'm going to keep asking until the baby is here. Please donate to the baby shower, the virtual baby shower that I would like to have for my daughter-in-law. And also, thank you for those who have donated as well. So, have a beautiful, blessed day, everybody. I love you all. Stay Diva and Divolicious. Please don't take offense into anything that I said this video if you do or have not trying to offend anybody i'm just trying to get my point across i love y'all